The FIFA 23 web app is here in all of its glory and it is dead. It's so disappointing. What are we even doing here, EA? What is going on everybody and welcome back to a brand new video on my channel. My name is Sean aka Elite and today we're talking about the FIFA 23 web app. We're going to talk about sniping filters. We're going to talk about trading methods. We're going to talk about a new objectives glitch to get you a couple of free packs. But let's start with the elephant that's in the room. The advanced SBCs are un tradable they're untradable hybrid leagues jumbo rare players pack untradable hybrid nations jumbo rare player pack untradable rare mega pack untradable you go into the inside of them everything is untradable and that that throws us into an audible because we've got to adapt very quickly to this change and unfortunately it's not a very positive change when we look at web apps specifically most of the experience that makes the web app great came from these advanced SBCs. Not only did they provide some extra packs to get us off the ground and get us some coins, sure, but they were the reason that there was demand for cards, there was supply of cards. That's what got the market going. And without that, we can't obviously go out and get any FIFA points. That doesn't work. You can't buy FIFA points yet. You And even if you have those FIFA points up there from like the Ultimate Edition, I've seen that on a few people's accounts. I don't know what's going on with that. I think it might be something with PC in the Ultimate Edition, but that's besides the point. You can't get FIFA points and you can't use them. So there's no supply coming from the packs and you can't go out and play games, obviously, because, well, you can't play games on the web app. So there's no coins and no pack rewards from that either. The only tradable packs that we're actually getting onto the market are packs that we got from the welcome back packs. And then obviously uh, a couple people are probably mad men going out and buying packs with coins, but don't be that guy. Nonetheless, the advanced SBCs are changing the dynamic of how the market works. We're not seeing demand for a lot of these gold cards. We're not seeing any sniping filters work too terribly well with gold cards, which means that we've got to go ahead and take a look at some of the other cards like bronzes and silvers that are being needed for both advanced and the foundations SBCs. And one of the filters that I like to use so far today has been English center mid silvers and this doesn't just work with england and it doesn't just work with center mid and it doesn't just work with silver this is a very adaptable sniping method but i'm going to show you exactly what i mean by this if you take a look at silvers that are english and center mid we're going to see that they're going for about 1100 on buy now pretty easily and there's nothing for less than that so if we're able to find one that pops up for a thousand coins that is some easy profit now at the thousand coins it's only 50 coins if you get one for 700 on the other hand well now you're looking at half a thousand coin profit almost on a single card and although it's not making you 50k an hour it is definitely going to add up over time as you guys can see we're up to 40,000 coins already and it's only been a few hours since release of the game and i've got a couple things on my transfer list as well as some packs to open despite the fact that they are untradeable let's go ahead and look at bronze cards that are center mid from england so we've got uh we've already looked at the silvers now we're looking at bronze they're selling for at least 700 could they sell for maybe 800 maybe 750 is probably what i'd list it for right now but let's see if there's any listed for 600 no let's go ahead and refresh our search this is one of the most important things you need to do on the web app because if we just go search and then we click on the back area and then we click search and then on the back hour we're not actually going to get any new cards popping up even if there are cards being listed in our filter we need to change something about our search to make sure it updates our search so i'll change my bid price to 150 and i'll search that now something else to remember and it does become a hassle you can't just go back to 200 it won't work you're gonna have to really mix up your searches we'll go to zero or any in search nothing popped up i'll change my rarity to common and then i'll search i'll change my chemistry style to basic which is smart because 99.99 percent of cards don't have chemistry tiles on them yet so you're gonna see still every single at least bronze card that pops up and we'll search and there's nothing there and then we can get rid of the common and we search and we've got some options we missed that we missed that i think we missed them all i think we missed them all but 
They did pop up for us. Unfortunately, we couldn't get any of them and make a little bit of profit off of that. But as I said, it doesn't just work with England. We can take a look at another big country like Brazil and we'll search what the cheapest center mids from Brazil are. And at bronze, they are more than 800 coins. And you've got to understand there's no bronze league in the game. So there's not going to be a ton of bronze Brazilians in the game. And it looks like they sell for about 950 at least. They sell for at least 950. So if we can get any of them for 850 or less, that is profit. We'll buy that for 800. Oh, we missed him as well. I was getting quite a few of these not too long ago. We'll take 50 coin profit on that. Um, 50 coins is not what we're looking for, but at least it gets us something. And we'll list that back up on the market. See if we get one more to pop up. We do. And we get him another 100 coins added to the account. As I said, we're not making 50K an hour but we just made 150 coins just like that. And let's be real, we're not really grinding it right now. I'm just trying to show you a lot of these different methods that can be used. I do actually like Brazil gold, left back and rare. This is a good sniping filter because you can get two different cards in this filter. The first of which is Renan Lodi, who's the cheaper of the two, but then you also can get Ismaili, who I think is going for about 4,000 coins right now. Maybe he'll, there he is, 4,100. Yeah. So there's Ismaili on the filter as well. So there's two different cards that you can get from this filter. And if you just search it at 2,600 and then update it to 2,500 or update it to min 300 and you can go all the way up to 800 without really getting rid of any of the possible cards that pop up so just updating the min price is probably the way to go and i've gotten a couple of these cards for about 750 coins in fact if you take a look at my transfer list right now you can see that there's quite a few different ren and Lodi cards on this list right here i think like eight or nine of them right there and we've made some coins on him we've made some coins on jose fonte but a lot of these came in the first couple of hours some of them have dropped back down in price pretty much to discard price ren and lodi however has held that value and they're few and far between now let's talk about whether we should keep or sell a big player that maybe you guys got in your welcome backpacks first of all add yemi this is a good example to use to start us off 7600 is approximately what he's going for right now and he's 75 rated. That's the killer to this card because yes, he does have 93 pace and he does have four star skill moves as well. Uh, only a uh, three star weak foot. So he's not spectacular, but again, he is 75 rated. It is 7,500 coins right now. That's pretty expensive for a 75 rated card. The reason that this card hasn't gone down lower in price is mainly because we haven't seen any supply yet. We haven't seen supply from those advanced SPCs. Nobody's gotten their 4,600 FIFA points yet. And we haven't uh, seen anybody buy any FIFA points either. In a 75 rated card, it's just too easy to pack. And so that card is going to come down in price. Now, I'm not saying there haven't been um, different cards that have been exceptions to the rule, like Furland Mendy. He had a 80 rated card in FIFA 20. And that card, for some reason or another, stayed very expensive at like 10,000 to 20,000 coins for months after release, which was crazy for an 80 rated card. But 75 rated, it's just pushing it. So I don't think that Adeyemi is a card you want to hold on to. I would sell him, no doubt. Next, we can talk about Furland Mendy because his card is pretty relevant this year as well as being pretty expensive. He's uh, 83 rated this year, just like last year. And he's going for about 32,000 coins. These are the toughest cards to predict. And here's what I'll say. This card will rise in price as the game comes out. It will go up after that. But if you need coins now to trade and you've only got 5,000 coins, 10,000 coins, I'd say sell this card, take the coins and start trading actively on the market. Make yourself more coins because even if this card goes up in price, the opportunity cost is really what you're losing you could be making so many more coins if you had those coins liquid. And you can always come back and buy that Furland Mendy and hopefully he hasn't risen too much by the time you bought him. But you'll have a ton more extra coins to work with and maybe go out and buy a second Furland Mendy or a different investment. So I'd say if you don't have a ton of coins already sitting around uh, and you actually want to make coins throughout the web app, if you don't have a ton of them, you would want to sell a card like this, despite the fact that I think he's going to go up. Now we can talk about some of the higher rated meta cards. And Erling Haaland might not be the perfect example of this because he's not terribly meta. In the last FIFA, everybody thought he was going to be spectacular because his stats, truthfully, do look pretty spectacular. Well, on the other hand, he doesn't really play that great in FIFA. 
or at least in FIFA 22 he did it, and he wasn't that expensive. But what we did see on the first couple of days of the release of the game, his card went from very cheap to very expensive very quickly. So despite the fact that we can't actually use him yet, he's gonna go up in price because one, he's much harder to pack at 88 rated. That's a tough card to pack. And two, 89 pace, 91 shooting, 87 physicality, 80 dribbling, and he plays for Manchester City. It's a card that's definitely going to at least double in price. There's no doubt about that. And there might be cards that triple. I'm not saying there aren't, and you've got to search for them yourself, but these cards of this kind of type, we're looking for a different like combination of, of characteristics on these cards. And the first one is high rated. High rated is harder to pack, less supply, makes it so it can go up more. Meta, that's the main one. Meta is going to go up in price. We got to look for those kind of cards. And obviously the third is Lynx. Lynx, he is Premier League. He is Manchester City. If he was French, it'd be perfect, right? If he was French or Brazilian, it wouldn't. there would be no issue whatsoever. It would be the perfect investment. So that is what we look for in an investment in a card. Next, we're going to talk about a objective that actually might be glitched. I went to my objectives and one of these uh, objectives for me, it, it was glitched, okay? And I actually got a couple of these packs, okay? So I'll show you guys the picture of the packs that you get in reward for doing this, but all you have to do is you go onto the transfer market, you go to consumables, you go to, um, to contracts, and go to gold. So it needs to be gold contracts and you have to buy now these cards. They're going for 200 to 250 coins, and as long as you just go buy now these cards, and you buy seven of them and then sell seven of them, you get these two packs absolutely free. I don't know how the glitch works. It's actually not even related to buying contracts. It's actually related to buying players on the transfer market, but it just works. So until that gets patched, I thought I'd go ahead and show you guys that. It'll give you two free packs. Buy seven gold contracts, sell seven gold contracts, get two packs. Let's open those packs now and see what we get. In the first one, we get Rui, Patricio, Nothing crazy special, and unfortunately, these aren't tradable either, but we can use those in SBCs and maybe in our squad here soon. And then a premium Electrum Players Pack, which is also not a terribly crazy great pack, but we do get Ronald Araujo, so that's not a terrible pack this early in the game. This guy is going for about, what is it, 4,000 coins? Maybe? Um, At least 2,000, it looks like. 2,000 to 4,000 coins. I mean, it's not bad. It's an 83-rated card. Um, so we'll take it and we'll add it to the club. It'll probably be in my starter team nonetheless because, well, I don't really have any cards in my club yet. So it's definitely going to be in the starter squad. Anyways, guys, hopefully this video did end up helping you guys out a little bit with trading on the FIFA 23 web app. I've got a lot more videos coming soon, including solutions for the advanced SBCs, as well as much more trading tips as we get more content in FIFA 23. Do not forget to hit that subscribe button down below and like the video if you did enjoy. Comment down below if you made it to the end of the video. I'll make sure to heart everybody's comment if you made it to the end of the video. You gotta answer this question though. What was the best pack uh, or the best player you've gotten in any of the packs today, whether it's a welcome back pack, an SBC pack, whatever. What's the best player you've packed in 23 so far? And that'll be it for me today. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.